Shabbat Shalom. It is so wonderful to join you this weekend. Thank you so much for the warm and friendly welcome I've already received. And I look forward to meeting those of you and talking to those of you I haven't yet talked to and met. I'm looking forward to the rest of the Shabbat together. Every week in shul, we enter two different time zones, biblical time and prophetic time. They are two ancient worlds the rabbis intentionally placed in conversation with each other. The link between the two weekly passages, the Torah portion and the Haftarah is not always clear. And as someone who likes puzzles, I often enjoy playing, what's the connection in my seat? The rabbis had several intentions with matching Parshiot to Haftarot, to put us in the mindset of an upcoming holiday, or to hyperlink something in the prophets to a passage in the Torah, or to draw our attention to parallels between themes or characters in the two selections. As I see it, this rabbinic project is fundamentally an exercise in holding two perspectives at one time. Judaism is infused with this kind of multivocality, layering voice upon voice and generation upon generation. A daf of Talmud, a page of Talmud is the prime example, as it is a page covered in texts spanning centuries, geography, and Jewish communal practice. It's a head-spinning, time-bending enterprise, and if you've studied it, you know it's nothing short of extraordinary. This very Jewish approach lays claim to the notion that insights are found in the conversation that takes place and not only from the conclusion. It's one of the reasons I find Jewish learning so enriching. Being exposed to multiple perspectives at once opens me up to new textual perspectives I never would have otherwise considered. The Haftarah works in a similar way, layering a passage from the book of Nevi'im, the book of prophets, on top of the weekly Torah portion allows the Haftarah to act as a commentary on the Torah portion. So we can ask two questions. What is the connection between Parshat Bo and this Haftarah? And what point could the rabbis have been making by placing these two selections in conversation? This week's Haftarah comes from the book of Jeremiah and predicts the imminent destruction of Egypt by the Babylonians, or in Hebrew, as it says in the first verse, lahakot et eretz Mitzrayim, to strike Egypt. And that is the same root as in Eser Hamakot, the ten plagues. The connection seems clear enough. Parashat Bo contains the last three plagues and the drowning of the Egyptian army while B'nai Israel go free, and those were all orchestrated by God. In the time of Jeremiah, God will once again bring Egypt to its knees, and this time with the help of the Babylonian army. And once again, God will spare the Jews, not only spare them, but return their captives and bring a sense of calm and peace to their lives. So what might the rabbis be trying to tell us in selecting these specific 16 verses of Jeremiah that we're about to read to, in connection with Parshat Bo? First, that Egypt once again became a powerful empire and a beautiful place. In the Haftarah, Egypt is called an Egla Yefefia and Bat Mitzrayim a handsome heifer and fair, but was led by a boaster who let the hour go by, and that would be Pharaoh, and that's a direct commentary on the Parsha. We know from the Torah portion that empires do not last forever, but now we have more proof that even if they rise again, they can fall again. To borrow a lyric from Hamilton, oceans rise, empires fall. It's the natural way of things, or divine intervention, as both the Torah and Haftarah suggest. But good things can come from the fall of a tyrannical power. To put it a different way, destruction can engender the creation of something new, of something different, and of something better. In the Parsha, the diminishment of Egypt's power 
enables the Israelites to be liberated. In the Haftarah, the conquering of Egypt enables Jewish captives to be released and peace to reign throughout the land of Israel. On this racial justice Shabbat, how can we take Jeremiah's message to heart? What oppressive systems are on their way out that will ultimately make room for a new world built on equity, justice, and love? Both the Haftorah and the Haftorah juxtapose the fall of Egypt with the salvation of Jacob. God's eternal love for us will protect us and prevail. It may be tough love at times, but God will not destroy us. Instead, we will be reunited with loved ones and enjoy a peaceful existence. Halabai, if only. That is the hopeful note that this Haftarah strikes at the end, and I can't help but see it as a mirror for our own troubled times. Somehow, Jeremiah's words are themselves a time machine, linking the ancient past to our present. They remind us that we've been here before and that we will get through the Ezrat Hashem with God's help. May we, may we take comfort in Jeremiah's prophecy and not lose hope that it will come to pass soon and in our own days. Amen. Amen. Wow. The Sefer Haftarah dedications for the book of Exodus are Janet Tassel in loving memory of Dr. Daniel Tassel. And the Haftarah can be found on page 395 in the Eitz Chaim.